Hi, I'm a resident of District 2 and honored to be part of this effort to ensure that all residents throughout Alameda County get a chance to define their communities and therefore determine how they are represented on the county board. I hope you'll join us. Thank you so much for taking some time from your busy schedule to learn about how fair and transparent redistricting works for Alameda County and throughout the state. The outcome of this redistricting process will impact you for the next 10 years. My name is Sarah Lamnan. I am chair of the Alameda County Coalition for Fair Redistricting. And together with our diverse and broad coalition, we have been working diligently to make sure that you have access to this process and can make your voice heard. The Alameda County Coalition for Fair Redistricting is made up of nonprofits, grassroots community groups, faith-based organizations, political groups, government groups, business and labor, as you can see here. On our next slide, you can see what we stand for. We believe that representation matters. Everyone has a right to be heard, and that starts with a fair redistricting process. We are looking to make sure that Alameda County especially has this inclusive process and making sure that the final map that is adopted in December reflects your input as a community member. So what is redistricting? Of course, we have lots of different levels of government and within those we have districts, subsections. The US Constitution requires that a count be taken of everyone living in the US every 10 years. That, of course, is the census. And redistricting follows this census to rebalance the number of people in each district with the goal of population equity, making sure that each legislator, whether they be a congressperson, board of the equalization member, a state assembly or senate member, county supervisor, a city council member, and so on, making sure that each of those legislators in that same body represents roughly the same number of people as close as possible to, equ to equal populations. Here you see a number of different elected bodies, political bodies that have districts, these subgroups for which lines will be redrawn this year. In the Board of Equalization, for example, there are four districts with 9.9 .9 million people in each of those districts. Congress has 52 with our Congress members representing 760,000 people per district. There's 40 state senators. There are 80 California assembly members. And in Alameda County, we have five districts, meaning five supervisors. Each will represent roughly 340,000 people. In this full list that you can see, there are also some cities that have districts and some school boards that have districts. And the blue ones represent places where an independent body not the elected body itself, but an independent body has been appointed to draw these lines so that they are as fair and impartial as possible. In the districts that are drawn with black ink, those actually draw the lines themselves. And answer the question, so why do you even care? Well, to represent a district, of course, one must not only live in their district, but they must be elected by a majority of the people that live there. And the decisions that our elected representatives make have a direct impact on our daily lives, which means allocating funding, making sure services reach our folks, and these funding and services that are available to us as residents in that specified community, all of that gets decided by the person who's elected to represent that district. And where those district boundaries are can determine who gets elected for that. How that district is made up can determine who has the majority voice in that area and therefore which issues receive the funding and services they need. So let me show you a practical example on our next slide. This is Berryessa, California, area of San Jose. And if you don't live there, if you're not part of Berryessa, you may not notice it on a map. It's about 40,000 people, but it has common business interests, socioeconomic characteristics, and over half of the population is AAPI identifies as Asian American Pacific Islander. And they have some shared backgrounds, some shared common interests and some common needs. In the 2001 redistricting process, Berryessa was split among four assembly districts as you can see in this image. 
one can imagine that a neighborhood of about 40,000 people would be able to garner more responsiveness if they were able to target one elected official, as opposed to having to go to four different representatives. When a community is divided like this, it can be hard to have specific community needs rise above the majority of the population because they're not a majority in any of these four districts. So for instance, if Berryessa had specific impacts from an earthquake or some natural disaster, um, the funding and the services would have to flow through four different offices as opposed to being concentrated. And so remember, after 2001, this map was in place for the next 10 years. On the next slide, you'll see that what is most critical is that the people of Berryessa did not want this to happen. They did not want to be divided. And it is up to the people who live there to make that decision. And so the folks in Berryessa said, you know what, we really don't like being divided. We want to be one district. And what's really remarkable about that is not only did they get together and voice that opinion and have that opinion heard by the redistricting commission, but they also said, we share freeways, businesses, and common interests with Milpitas, Fremont, and Newark. And of course, Fremont and Newark are above the Alameda County line. One might have thought that the logical way to redraw the district would have been to stop at the Alameda County Santa Clara boundary. But because residents in this area spoke up and said, no, no, we belong with Fremont and Newark, as well as Milpitas and the other areas of Berryessa, we want to be one district. And they succeeded. They are now represented by Alex Lee, who is AAPI and are now at Assembly District 25. So bringing this back to Alameda County, this is one of the largest counties in the nation. We're 20th in the nation in terms of population, seventh in California, and we are profoundly diverse. As you can see on the next slide, all of our populations are really mixed. We, we're not really a majority minority area. We're all different um, races. No one minority has the majority. And so making sure that all of the diverse voices are heard matters. As you'll see on the next slide, it's also the case that Alameda County controls a lot of our tax dollars. Our supervisors budget $3.5 billion every year for public works, social services, assistance programs, healthcare, and so on. And so where that money flows depends a lot on our redistricting lines. So as a quick recap on our next slide, you'll see how this redistricting process works. So every year you have, for instance, here is a sample county. It's got 20 people in it and it's four districts. So easy math, that makes five people per district. Census comes around every 10 years and we learn that people have moved, passed away, um, were born. And so those districts are now uneven and then they get redrawn in this redistricting process. But how these lines can get drawn, as we've been talking about, really can, can silence a voice or lift up a voice of the community. So as you'll see on the next slide, when you draw these lines to rebalance the population, you could draw them in a way that keeps a minority population isolated. And when we say minority, it could be anything. This could be minority of opinion, could be people from a different background than the majority of the area. It could even be a geographic boundary where some people live on one side of a hill, a mountain, a stream, a freeway, and have different health concerns. For instance, if they were living near a freeway, they may have different health concerns than a population that's living farther away from it. In the image here on the left, you will see that while 25%, quarter of this county, sample county's population is of this minority opinion background, et cetera, they only make up a small portion of each district. But it is legal and appropriate to actually draw four districts in the way that you see on the right. And in this case, this blue district here in the middle now has a majority opportunity for that minority opinion to really be heard, to make sure that their issues rise to a high level to make sure that their votes bring in representation perhaps that represents their opinion in a louder way than they can if they were just dispersed as they are on the left. And so on the next slide, you'll see that the state of 
California has created a set of rules to try and help make sure that community voice is represented when you draw these maps. There are national requirements as well. We talked a little bit about those earlier with the population equity and making sure that minority opinions are not um, subjugated when you draw lines. And the state of California in 2019 added an additional layer to this called the Fair Maps Act. And so it has ranked criteria. Each of the ones higher up on the list supersede the ones below it because it's not possible to get all six of these in any given district. And so they put some criteria to, or some ranking to it. So the first one is contiguity, meaning that a, a district must be contiguous. You cannot, for instance, in Alameda County, have a district that includes Hayward and Fremont and Newark, but you skip Union City. Those communities are contiguous. You can't reach around them, um, reach around a population to scoop up a different population. This number two is the, the biggest way that community members can participate in this process. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in the coming slides. But suffice it to say that community of interest is where your voice, you live in a community, you are the person to speak for that community and say, we are bound by these boundaries. We have this in common with this other community and therefore we wanna be in a district together. It is also important to maintain the integrity of census designated places. These are places that have their own unique identity but are not incorporated. So in Alameda County, we have a number of these, Sonol, Cherryland, Ashland, Castro Valley, all places that identify as their own but are not incorporated. And it may be interesting to note that on the current map, some of these are divided, even though their populations are fairly small. Sonol is 900 people. It's represented by two districts. And Ashland is somewhat bigger, but again, divided by two districts. And then the map should also utilize boundaries that are identifiable for residents. So the boundaries should make sense. If everybody thinks that this particular freeway is where their community stops and starts, then that is a natural place to draw a line. Geographically compact speaks back to the contiguity issue and also making sure that a district is not spread out all over across the map. That can really lead to gerrymandering, which is something obviously we want to avoid. And then lastly, it's really important to note that there is no partisan role for redistricting. So the Democrats or the Republicans or the Green Party don't get to say this is where the line should be. As a political group, elected officials are not supposed to be picking, well, I'm a Democrat, therefore I want to stretch my district to reach Democrat voters so I can stay in office. And also where incumbents currently live is not meant to in any way have a say in where the lines are drawn. That this really is a fair and equal process and anybody, regardless of their voter status, their age, their background, can participate in saying how they want lines drawn. So on the next slide, we'll show a video. This is a more information about what is a community of interest. What is a community of interest? Every 10 years after the U.S. Census, California must redraw the boundaries of its Congressional, State Senate, State Assembly, and State Board of Equalization districts to reflect the new population data. While the California Citizens Redistricting Commission waits to receive census data, it is collecting communities of interest information from Californians. Communities of interest are defined as a concentrated population which shares common social and economic interests that should be included within a single district for purposes of its effective and fair representation. Examples include areas in which the people have similar living standards, similar cultures, use the same transportation systems, have similar work opportunities, belong to the same school district and or water district, or have access to the same media. People can belong to multiple communities of interest, such as a cultural community, as well as an economic community of interest. Communities of interest may also vary depending on whether they are for state or federal office. While there are no hard rules on how to define a community of interest, we've identified ways for you to describe your community. Begin with your county and city or rural community. Mention the street names and significant locations in your neighborhood to help us identify the parameters of your community. What are your shared interests? What brings you together? What is important to your community? Are there nearby areas you want to be in a district with? Why do you want to be grouped with these areas? Are there nearby areas you don't want to be in a district with? Why not? 
Has your community come together to advocate for important services, better schools, roads, or health centers in your neighborhood? Here's an example of a community of interest. I live in a unique area of Farmers Branch called Oak Knoll Valley. The neighborhood is bounded between Highway 9 on the west and Sunnyside River on the east side. It is primarily a residential area with some areas zoned for commercial and mixed use, especially along the river. The languages spoken in Oak Knoll Valley are primarily English and Spanish, with some residents speaking Vietnamese and Mandarin. Across the river from Oak Knoll Valley is the community of River Glen, which is similar to our community as it is primarily residential. We are in the same school district, and the high school which Oak Knoll students attend is in River Glen. It would make sense that we would be included in the same legislative and congressional districts. Please keep in mind that a community of interest is not a district, and a district is not a community of interest. California State Constitution stipulates that communities of interest shall not include relationships with political parties, incumbents, or political candidates. Communities of interest are important building blocks that we will be using to draw the new district lines. Following are the various ways you can submit your community of interest. For more information about the commission, please visit our website at wedrawthelineca.org. So now let's think about your community of interest. Where is it located? What are the boundaries? What brings your neighborhoods together? What do you have in common? Do you have common struggles? Do you have common interests? Are many people concerned about school issues or transportation issues? Does traffic tie you together because you're all part of a specific area that is fed or not fed by public transit or highway? or freeway systems? Do you have priorities that are different than other parts of the county? What areas make sense for you to be districted with and which ones make sense to be separate? You know, hold on to those thoughts for a minute, maybe take a few notes. We'll talk a little bit about the timeline and then we'll get you to submit your, co your community of interest information today. So on the next slide, you can see our process and Alameda County's process specifically. Over this month, the month of September, um, we are asking everybody to submit their community of interest. And you can do that by the website. We will show you that in a minute. An email address, you can do it by mail, and you can do it in person. There are two meetings, you'll see those here, September 21st and October 12th, are places that you can tune in by Zoom to the meetings, to participate and give your community of interest live. There will also be a meeting before they just talk about the process of drafting the map. That's a public hearing. On September 23rd, the US Census Bureau will release another set of data. This will be more locally focused and that'll allow the drawing of the draft maps. And so once those draft maps are created, there will be more public opportunity to participate. You are more than welcome to do that. At this point, all of those meetings will be virtual, as far as we know. And then in December, the county will adopt a final map. So you have, it may feel like a lot of time, but it will come very quickly. And so we ask you to get your community of interest information put in today. And I'll show you how to do that. Thank you. And I also want to appreciate uh, one of our coalition members, Andrew Turnbull, who is running all of our technology today. Thank you, Andrew. So you can go to the state website and we will show you an instructional video about that in just a moment. The tool there uh, allows you to literally draw those boundaries. My community is from this point to this point. And then also most importantly is not only to draw those lines, but then to share a story. Why is this the boundaries of your area? What does your area have in common with its, uh, with other folks, just like we showed in the other video. What are those common needs and interests that tie you together? And what are adjacent areas that share that same demographic makeup, issue area makeup, et cetera? And what areas do not have common ground and should not be part of your district? So let's show the video and then we'll come back and draw those maps. Welcome to a brief walkthrough video of Draw My California Community. This tool was developed by California Statewide Database to facilitate public access to California Statewide redistricting process. Through Drama California Community, 
Anyone who lives in California can create public input and send it directly to the California Citizens Redistricting Commission. This tool is available in 16 languages, is free to use, and was developed to meet web accessibility standards. Draw My California Community is available anywhere you could get on the internet at drawmyca.community.org. To use the tool, you can either create an account and log into Draw My California Community or work on the map as a guest. Whether you use Draw My California Community as a guest or as a logged in user, you could share your community input with the California Citizens Redistricting Commission. If you create an account, you could save a draft of your work and come back to it later. If you don't have an email address or do not wish to create an account, you could always use the guest option. Please follow my cursor as I point out various features throughout this walkthrough. On the side panel, click the arrow next to the words Describe Your Community to expand this section. Tell the California Citizens Redistricting Commission about your community by responding to the questions in this section. Try to describe your community in a way that helps the Commission understand who is a part of your community and what is important to you. You can describe your community however you like. The only limitation is that your community should not be defined by its relationship to a political party, candidate, or incumbent. You'll be asked four questions about your community. The first two are required, but the last two questions are optional. When you are done describing your community, click Draw Your Community to expand this section. In this section, you will find the drawing tools and everything you need to draw a map of your community. The drawing tools allow you to move the map, add areas to your map by clicking, add areas by rectangle, add areas by freehand, and remove areas from your map by clicking or by rectangle. You can also use the undo or redo buttons to undo or redo changes you just made to your map. To begin working with the map, navigate to the location of your community. Zoom in and out of the map using the plus and minus buttons, or use your trackpad or the wheel on your mouse to zoom in or out. You can also search for a specific location using the search feature. A pin will appear at the location you search. To move the map, use the pan tool to click and drag on the map area. The pan tool is automatically active when you open Draw My California Community. The drawing layer that is displayed on the map at any given time is the layer you could use to draw the location of your community by using the drawing tools. Right now, we could see the county lines displayed, which means we could add counties to the map. The drawing layer is controlled by Zoom. Zooming in from the county level will switch the drawing layer to cities and towns, tribal areas, then tracks, and finally blocks. You can find out which drawing layer is currently visible on the map underneath the Draw Your Community section in the sidebar. If you want to use a specific drawing layer, click the Choose Drawing Layer drop-down list below the Drawing Layer label. Choose the layer you want to work with, then zoom to whichever view works best for you. By switching between drawing layers, you can create your map to be as accurate as possible. To refine my map, I'll now zoom into the Blocks layer and add a few blocks. When you are happy with your community map and description, you can share your input with the California Citizens Redistricting Commission by clicking the Submit button located at the bottom of the side panel. At the Review and Submit panel, you'll have one last opportunity to edit the written description of your community before sending it to the Commission. After reviewing your work, click Submit. Your community input will be sent directly to the California Citizens Redistricting Commission. Once you submit, you can download the files associated with your community input. Keep these files for your own records or share them with your neighbors or community members to encourage them to participate in this important process. If you have any questions while using Draw My California Community, help is available. Click on the chat icon to access tech support in real time. For more information, please click the link to our user guide below. Thank you for your participation in this important process. Thank you. So hopefully by now you feel ready to talk about your community of interest, you understand what it is, you understand how to participate. And once you have submitted your community of interest to the state process, 
you'll see those links here and we'll have them again on the next slides. You can then submit that same information to the county process. And even if your city is districted, if you have special districts, for instance, your water board, your recreation district, many jurisdictions will be going through redistricting this year. And so we ask you today to go to drawmycacommunity.org, complete your map, and then send it to the county and to every other jurisdiction so that your voice is heard. Remember, your voice is your map, or your map is your voice, however you want to think about that. Here are those websites. The second one here is the county website. They also have a tool to submit information if you wanted to just go through them directly. You're certainly welcome to do that. Visit the county website, visit the state website, complete your community of interest information. If you'd like more information about our coalition or would like to get involved, feel free to join us. We are at alcoredistricting.org, that second bullet point. Feel free to like and share and repost what we're doing on social media. We're at Alco Redistricting or AC Redistricting on Twitter. Just want to thank you again for getting involved in making sure that you are telling the story of your community and that you are speaking up and making sure that your community's interests are represented in these new maps that are being created. I hope you'll join us.